Moses Masasa and Uput Bongile, welcome. Um, what a privilege and an honor for me to sit down with you and have this conversation. Um, I'd like to first give you an opportunity to introduce yourselves and just maybe tell us a little bit about your work or the work that you do. Okay, ladies first. first. <laughs> Look how he caught sight and he hands it over to me. Um, I am Masasa Bangeni. I am an actor by profession. I am an activist by passion. I feel that uh, when much is given, much is expected, especially when you have a platform that Wongele and I have, which is to be in people's homes every night and to be welcome into people's homes every night. That gives you a sort of access that I don't take for granted. And so it is a biblical concept of where much is given, much is expected. And I try my best to use that much that has been given to me through my acting um, to shed light on issues and challenges and, and questions that I have for society um, using my platform that acting has given me. Um, mm. And that's why I like to be called an activist because I think in our, in our true sense, that's what actors are. Sure. We, <clears throat> if we look at what Oma Miriam Makeba were, what um, you know, Maya Angelou was, those were people who used their acting, their art, to transform and bring about change. So that's what I am, an actor and an activist who is trying in a small little way to bring change. Mm. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Bongile Mansai. I'm also an actor, uh, a writer, director, facilitator. I've been working for the past 15 years for Baxter Theatre, uh, UCT as Umdu uh, or Yagwe communities find stories, uh, change young people, work with young people. And yeah, and I'm also, yeah, uh, <laughs> someone who wants to impact um, than impressing a band we, we industry, it, you know. Um, I've realized what you, we have this, this tendency of becoming celebrities, but not human beings. So, yeah, that's me, Bongile from Cape Town, yeah. Exciting. Um, but Bongile, on you, still on you. Um, if I can just ask a general question, and I'm going to ask you to kind of um, reflect back um, on your experiences. Unjane kuba indoda in South Africa, especially... Uh, with regards to like, climate, Sikuyo, Yejelebi's violence. How does that feel? I think I have two feelings about it. Um, one, I'm at the upper hand when it comes to indo yejelebi based violence. I'll tell you why. I was looking at the numbers in Amklanj online. As a band, last year, 2020, it's 1.75 million a year, increasing of 1.7. It means a scenario the upper hand kulendo bayenzai. So basically, I'm not the privilege you go into as wrong and get away with so on. And if you look at the positions, I'm not daughter with companies, with salo, you know, uh, we still have a privilege. You know, and if you look at in old days, and if you look at the young generation, we're still following because of footsteps. Mm. We haven't learned anything. Yeah. So I would say Mzanz Africa today, for some people, it's a privilege. Yeah. You know? And number two, banga pabano about colorizing don't my daughter. Today in South Africa, how many female directors do we have? How many female writers do we have? How many female priests do we have? How many female? You know, I can I can name so many things. Mm. But how many other positions? If you go to the parliament, how many positions? Zabanda ba ngotata esnazo. So for now, I would say. It's a privilege for Abandabanga 
namadoda kulo mzansi Afrika siku. Yeah, and lendo bonge la aiteta yuko uh, ba, you know, quoting these stats. The reality of those stats, bongs, is that those are reported incidences. Yeah. So many, you know, incidences go unreported. And, and I, I bet you that if we were to actually do a proper count of people actually reporting, Absolutely. we would find that it, that number would be astronomical. We would be in shock. And, and the reason why Abandu Beso Yiga Ugo Ribota is because Bayayaz Ukuba, the burden of proof is going to be on them. So no one wants to go through that trauma. So I agree with Ubongile that being in Dota in South Africa at the moment so in this climate is a privilege because we're going through a very public incident with very powerful men in the entertainment industry right now where it's a case of he, he said, she said, fake WhatsApps, are they not fake? The burden of proof is always on you as the woman. And so as in Dota, geez, I wish I was a man. Yeah. I mean, I've got great privileges of being a, a, a woman that I enjoy, but I'm pretty sure we'll navigate me in this world, in this country, in this climate. Looking at how our media and entertainment industry is handling things would be much easier. I fully agree with you, Mrs. I mean, we get away with so many things. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would also say when, uh, when the CC, I think sometimes I look at how I approach things as in Lord. Yeah. And I look at how women approach things. It, it seems as if Nendo enga enga balance you. You know that they have to always prove. They always have to be submissive. Whereas I can get into a space and claim that space. Yeah. And say, you know what? If you don't want to give me this, I'm gonna leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I always feel like when I go to a space, I can navigate a space and I can use. I must learn it here as a man, but I'm man and not going to do it. I can have that attitude and not going to do it and put me in the end. Yeah, I, it seems like um, the, 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 these two worlds, Zoba, you as a man, you are just living as a man. And on top of that, there is that privilege. Can the women kind of have to fight to survive? And just living as women is not even a, a reality for us.